tempting white milk and dark chocolatey goodness. Um, these are Sherry's Berries. You've probably heard about them, but you, you, you might be like, oh, well, you know, I mean, dipped strawberries. Fine. I had never tasted anything this good. It is, they are the best tasting thing. You can get, uh, they start at $19.99, and that's over a 40% savings. Or, and I recommend this highly, double the berries for just 10 bucks more. And all you have to do to get that savings is to use coupon code FTL. You go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries.com, and there'll be a microphone in the upper right-hand corner. You click on that, you enter coupon code FTL, you'll get the savings. I highly recommend these gifts. You're really going to enjoy them. Whoever you get them for is going to really enjoy them. Get the, Double them that way if you're around when they're there. You can actually have some because they're going to eat them all if you just get the, the single order. Berries.com, coupon code FTL. You click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner, or you can call them at 866-FRUIT-02. You'll need the coupon code FTL again. 866-FRUIT-02-Berries.com. All right, we've got the guys, a couple of the guys from uh, the Seasteading Institute. Joe and Randy are on the line with us here, and uh, they're on via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Guys, uh, you were telling us about the the idea of having kind of a hospital ship that would exist in international waters uh, where people could get treatments that may not be legal yet in their country. Uh, you've kind of been trying to go through the legal channels of getting this done, and it has been a time-consuming and ultimately unsuccessful process in that you cannot get an answer from the FDA. What was your plan of uh, your plan of action at this point? Well, at this point, I think we're going to have to have seasteads uh, in international waters unless the FDA wants to tell us that we can take a ship to nowhere mm -hmm. and offer people some of these treatments. Uh, and we've you know, met a few people, a few medical entrepreneurs that are very interested in creating uh, new regulatory structures on the water that would take some of the burdens uh, off the FDA uh, and create a more efficient process because the uh, FDA in general just has no incentive to make things more efficient and it's not really any individual's fault. It's the problem of the incentives that exist inside any monopoly. What's the well, point that, of creating more regulations? I mean, aren't regulations the problem? Aren't they, you know, what's stagnating the medical industry, preventing innovation from happening in the first place? Why do you want to have more regulations? Well, if you think of market-based regulations, I mean, markets regulate themselves in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the industry usually uh, over time will evolve its own uh, rules uh, based on sort of uh, competition. So you don't just need competition between um, medical entrepreneurs. You need competition between the regulatory bodies themselves. Is, is regulation, I mean, so to me, that's a, like a bad word. How about like certifying? I mean, I know that in the technical field, like in, uh, in IT, there's different certifications. There aren't industry regulations per se as much as there are maybe industry standards and certifications that are available. But the term regulation to me just kind of drips of government. Um, it doesn't feel that way to you? Uh, it does a little bit. I mean, a lot of people apply the term regulation uh, just to markets, and maybe somebody smarter than me could come up with a, a better, more seductive word for what you and I are referring to. Uh, but we, we can agree that a, a monopoly of uh, rule production just accumulates more and more rules, mm, uh, and yeah. very few of these rules ever go away, and we simply can't micromanage the future with laws now. And I always say that, you know, uh, medical innovations becoming available in 2020 shouldn't be held back by rules written in 1970. You know, mm -hmm. we know that the that there's a place called the Surgery Center of Oklahoma, and I believe there's other places opening up like this that essentially they have sloughed off the bureaucracy of, in many cases, in many of the government uh, bureaucracies that go into payments and, and um, also... It's mostly it, it comes from insurance. When you accept insurance, you take all these rules the government has uh, that are piled up, and their costs are a tenth in some cases. One tenth. Yes. You know, ninety percent of the cost of medicine in this country is bureaucracy set up by the government. I mean, who, why, and then and then people complain about how the average person can't afford medicine. The average person can afford medicine just fine. It's the government bureaucracy that's mandated that they can't afford. Yes, and if we could if we could operate outside this bureaucracy, we could drive prices down, make services go faster. This is the way markets work uh, in every other industry. 
And it's not a radical idea. I mean, physicians like the ones you mentioned are sick of it and stepping outside uh, the, the paradigm. Mm -hmm. And people are soliciting us, um, telling us they want to move offshore wow. and move things forward. Well, that's There's exciting. There's more nowhere project we worked on. Uh, it was really just one small thing that we did on the side. Uh, our, our bigger project is our floating city project. Right. Uh, we'll call you back and talk to you about that maybe next month. Um, okay, but sure. our goal is to try to get an actual floating city happening uh, before the end of this decade. Okay, and I was going to ask you. That was going to be one of my questions. Right, I donated to this, so I want to hear a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. For want, the what donation. are you doing with my money? And, and, and let me uh, use that opportunity to remind people it is the end of the year and we are a nonprofit. And you can donate to us at seasetting.org. But uh, we, we are uh, full steam ahead with the Floating City Project. Uh, we put out a report that came out with designs and working with architects, engineers. We have a, a model of our floating, you know, the, the modules uh, going into a wave tank this month at University of New Orleans. Mm. Um, we have a potential location we're working with, but we're also looking at others. So, um, there's a lot of information about it. We could talk for the next uh, two hours about it right now. But um, check out seasteading.org slash floating dash city dash project or just find the link. Um, and, and I'll call you back next month and talk about it. You All know, right. they, they're constant, people are constantly telling folks that want more freedom in their lives, if you don't like it, why don't you move to Somalia? And what they mean is, is why don't you go someplace and try this idea of more freedom you're talking about? I mean, this is the freest country on earth, and, and we've, and, you know, just because it's slipping down the charts of, uh, of freedom uh, compared to the rest of the countries, you should ignore that. And I think that that's what seasteading really is about. It's like, okay. Well, the technology has gotten to the point that we really can create uh, bodies of people out on the water. And I, I think that it's a fine idea. Let's put some real competition out there because what seems to happen on the land is, is that people that crave power uh, extract the wealth of hardworking people and do whatever they do with it, whether they you know, make weapons to kill people or whether they give it to other folks and skim off half of it in their name, um, you know, just keeping, keeping quite a bit for themselves. Whatever it is that they do, they're inefficient at everything that they they attempt let's take a look at the fda for a second and uh, let's just try something new and the only way to try that is to get out there and create new places and all the places are gone i wanted to uh, thank you guys for calling in tonight i appreciate it, it was very interesting and i'm glad to know that some people are trying out to uh, trying to innovate and think outside the the, uh, the United States box in order to do Thanks so. Thanks for having us on. And I do want to say, you know, Joe did a really good job writing up this story. It's a lot of fun to read. You can find it on our blog. We put it out in five parts. So I encourage people to to hear to, to read the whole recount of it. All right. Thanks for the call tonight, guys. That's uh, a couple of the guys from the Seasteading Institute. And Mark, you've been a big proponent of this as uh, as an idea, the idea of let's take people from all around the world and go set up a more free place in the one place where there's no jurisdiction of Not much jurisdiction. I mean, governments still claim some uh, jurisdiction out in the open. In uh, international In the high waters? seas. Well, I mean, you know, Is there's maritime the law, right? Who enforces maritime law? I don't know. The UN? I don't know. <laughs> well, the maritime law has been around longer than the UN. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've got their, their d dirty little fingers in it. So but who does enforce maritime law? I, I, I would have to research that. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. But I can tell you that when you're talking about, uh, you know, starting, if you want to start your own free place here in, in the United States, you're going to have a difficult time doing it. If you want to try oh, yeah. to do it in some other country you're gonna have a terrible time doing it look at the free state project i mean it is not an easy road that we're on here but i don't know if sea setting is going to be an easy road when all said and done either we'll come back with we'll more see. here in moments 855 450 free and of course the free state project is happening there are over 1600 people who are here now it's not some sort of future thing that might happen we're coming up for all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit Herbalhealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Herbalhealer.com, healing the world with nature. One person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. We're here, and we'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Coming up, what does Ron Paul want for Christmas? We'll share that with you, and of course, you can share your thoughts with us. We are, we're on Skype, by the way. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. That's where our guests were actually on uh, the line. I actually didn't know they were going to be on tonight, Mark, until they called five minutes before the show. They're not guests. They're, call, they're a call. Oh, okay. Good to know. And so, interesting stuff with the Seasteading Institute, the idea, of course, being to take it to the high seas, this whole freedom thing. It's hard to get going in a place where there's a government ruling but what if you do it in international waters? What if you created your own community? Or in this case, they were talking about like a medical ship, but it could be anything. It could be any kind of a tech incubator ship or, you know, some sort of entrepreneurial ship, uh, food ships. Who knows what kind of stuff they could come up with. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you think about a, a cruise ship, they um, they do all kinds of things there that uh, and can do so much more that probably wouldn't be regulated at all. Uh, for instance, I know that in many European countries, there's no limit and there's no age as far as consumption of alcohol goes. So, 
you know, young people out on a cruise ship could probably drink alcohol. I'm not a lawyer. You shouldn't take this as lawyering advice. Mm -hmm. Certainly cruise ships do gambling out there. Um, you know, what other things could it be? What other you know, just sort of restrictions that are here in the United States that are somehow supposed to make it a better world, but in fact make it uh, that much more arduous, employ a bunch of useless government bureaucrats to enforce? Uh, how could we make the world better just by being outside of the jurisdiction of the U.S.? Well, of course, you can share your thoughts with us. Uh, the seasteading thing, it sounds like it's got some money behind it. They seem to be well organized. They were just saying they're going to be testing out uh, one of their models in a wave pool or something like that, which mm -hmm. is very exciting. Sounds like they're you know, well on the way towards coming up with a proof of concept. Of course, it's in competition with the Free State Project. It's not in competition with the Free State Project. No? Something entirely different. Why? Why is that different? The idea is to move people to the same place, isn't it? Well, okay. So with the Free State Project, I think is is uh, I think it's going to be an evolution when it comes to these things. I mean, the Free State Project, say New Hampshire, one of the freest places on the planet, is what the Free State Project's based on. Uh, you know, it, that's where we're based. Uh, you take a look at the charts around the the world. You see the United States is meh, sometimes in the top ten, sometimes not in the top ten of freest places, depending mm -hmm. on what you're looking at. New Hampshire, however, has been three out of the five times the Mercatus Center's done the study, been the freest place. So if you assume that that's an aggregate of you know, the U.S. being, say, 12th or whatever in the world as far as economic freedom, New Hampshire may be a little bit higher on that chart. Where did I see? Was it Mercatus Center? I saw some kind of study recently that looked at North America. Uh -huh. So it looked at Mexican uh, states, Canadian provinces, and it looked at U.S. states, mm -hmm. and it ranked them all based on economic freedom. I'm in New not Hampshire. familiar with that, no. New Hampshire was up in the top five or six. Uh, so there was like two or three Canadian Just places. Just economic freedom? Yeah. I, th okay. I think it was economic freedom. I okay. don't recall exactly. But well, I don't New know Hampshire the study was, you're, you're talking about. It so. was up there for sure. So New Hampshire is one of the freest places on the planet. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, with New Hampshire, there's still... 300 years of laws all piled up, and many of them are irrelevant to our lives. So, for sure. instance, it's illegal to uh, to conduct business on Sunday in New Hampshire. Nobody enforces this law, but it exists, and that's a problem. Yeah. So, uh, oh, there's a real attraction to just going out and starting fresh. Right. There's so, no doubt. If you're talking about going in and out in international waters, say you're talking about negative 10 as far as freedom is zero. You go out in international waters, you're at negative 10. New Hampshire's at negative 100. California's at negative 200. Mm -hmm. People choose what they choose for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, New Hampshire gives you firm land underneath your feet. There is that. It's yeah. a lot probably going to be a lot cheaper than going out on the water. It can't, it probably Initially, isn't gonna, maybe yeah. it'll get cheaper to go out on the water it eventually. It certainly will. All technologies get cheaper as people but adopt them. But you're still looking for the same kind of person. You're still looking for the person with a vision Not really. for the future okay. who's willing to take a risk. No, no you're, you're absolutely wrong. You're yeah. looking for poor people to move to New Hampshire, but people of poor and uh, middle uh, concerns to move to New Hampshire. Because, no, I mean, no, 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 there's listen no to me. specification to as to how rich you have to be to move to New Hampshire, Mark. That's not the case at all. Business law in New Hampshire is not great. When you take a look at the Mercatus Center study and you look at opening a business in New Hampshire, you'll see, oh, yeah, well, this is just your average crappy state uh, when it comes to opening a business as far as freedom goes there. When you move your business out on the water, however, you slough off a myriad of of regulations. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, you're going to have to have uh, workers, depending on your type of business, but many businesses are going to be very interested in going out on the water sure. because they're going to be able to get rid of uh, those regulations. Then people will be attracted to those businesses for jobs and that sort of thing. New Hampshire's really in a different sphere. You know, I, I mean, I guess I, I understand the argument that you're making, but I still think it it has to. Both of these movements are competing to some extent because they're well, they're trying to attract uh, the people who are willing to take that risk. And I understand that you're saying that maybe people who have more capital to invest would be more interested in moving out on the water. Of course, depending on the kind of business they're doing. Obviously, if they're a well drilling business, they're probably not going to do very well out on the water. So it depends You're on talking the, water wells. Uh, yeah. Lots of people drill wells out the water. They're usually digging for oil though. No, no, I meant water, like a water well. There's certain types of sure. businesses this the plumber just not isn't going to do so good there. Well, there's probably going to be plumbing on the the ships, I would expect, but uh, you know, not as much business will be there initially for those folks. But uh, so, yeah, okay, I can see maybe the seasteading thing being more attractive to people who are already in business or who want to get into business and have some money behind them. 
But I think those people are also going to be attracted to New Hampshire as well because of the huge liberty community here. And whether or not you've got money, there's still risk involved in either one of these things. I mean, moving, picking up your, uh, you know, picking up your existing business and moving that, whether it's out to sea or moving into New Hampshire, is an expensive, risky process. And if you don't have a bunch of money, it's still there's still risk involved. You still have to take that jump and take that leap into doing something different. There's a special kind of person that it takes to uproot themselves from where they are, no matter what their economic strata, to say, yes, I see some sort of vision for something different on the horizon, and I'm willing to go for that. That's a very, very small group of people, and I think that there is some competition Okay, so there's here. competition, and I think that's wonderful. Competition makes uh, makes businesses that survive Better. Good. I'm glad you're admitting it. Let's go. Well, to I don't, think, I don't think it's that much of a competition. I wouldn't move my business. I wouldn't be that interested in moving my business to New Hampshire. Temper is in legal. Well, thankfully there are people who are moving their businesses yeah, here, Mark. Uh, and you did move your business here, so I don't know what you're talking I followed about. Followed you, Temper. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, um, may I have an idea where maybe you could move uh, your quote unquote business to Seastead without actually relocating? What if they started building? data centers. I think that's going to be the first thing. Well, doesn't Google already do that? Well, the reason why Google did it is basically for thermodynamics. You can use the water to offload the heat uh, from these data centers, but they actually were going to stay inside of U.S. domain, um, use rivers and stuff like that. But if you... uh, you know, went 10 miles out or whatever the international 13? water barrier is. 13. And, uh... Okay. Yeah, I think that's a fine idea. Uh, and I think that, the you know, the more investors and uh, business folks we can see jumping on board, it's going to get more attractive to others to come on board for the seasteading. I really, I wish them the best. I hope it does, uh, it does work out for them. I'll certainly be watching uh, with interest. Temper, anything well, else you want to share? If you look at what's going on with that Sony debacle right now where they stopped the interview from releasing mm-hmm. and then the president uh, kind of got his nose into it, and then immediately after they talked about how horrible it was, they talked about the the need to rein in the, the wild, wild west that is the Internet. Um, you can kind of see that they're really capitalizing on this situation to try to get I believe CISPA is back alive all of a sudden. Yeah, this is uh, is a privacy invading federal government set. Yeah. Yeah, potential temper. Thanks for your call, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. This whole Sony hack situation, I guess there was some discussion on your show on Thursday night, Mark, on Free Talk Live. Yeah, we talked about it, sure. Um, and how you know this federal government is saying they think it was North Korea, but Wired.com has an article saying the evidence that it was North Korea is very, very flimsy. Yeah, people are moving forward with the idea that North Korea is behind the hack, and I'm not disagreeing North Korea is behind the hack, I would suggest that North Korea doesn't have, uh, quite possibly doesn't have the acumen and the technological ad- equipment to do the hacking, that maybe they contracted it out to some other organization. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that they're pretty close with places like Russia and China, which are well, known for some hacking. Uh, maybe they you know, did some stuff there. Both of those countries, I believe, are right on the border of uh, North Korea. So... Hmm. Maybe it was them. I don't know the answer, but... Um... So I don't think I believe the claim that it was some sort of Sony conspiracy to uh, promote their movie because they're releasing all these emails from the Sony executives, and those aren't things they're gonna, they would have wanted to be yeah. released. Um, and in fact, there's now emails coming out where Sony executives are saying they think this movie would have sucked and it was going to flop. Well, I think that it would have flopped until... It looked awful. This There's more promotion. coming up here. This is Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's floor buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more floor buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, December 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $330. Antiwar.com reports Pakistan had scrapped the death penalty for civilians in 2008, but with officials eager to show they are tough on terror, they brought back the policy yesterday, hanging a pair of militants. They're the first of many, according to Pakistani officials, with another 400 executions in the weeks to come, with the Home Ministry saying the killings will boost morale in the public after this week's massacre. Pakistan has been trying to increase Taliban body counts since the massacre, claiming 119 militants killed in various offenses since then, though as usual, the claims that everyone killed was a militant seems debatable. Details on who is being executed and when are scant, but the Interior Ministry says that some 20 other detainees will be executed over the weekend and into early next week. Pakistani Taliban officials issued a statement vowing revenge for the executions, saying they will likely kill the families of army generals and politicians as a way of causing mourning for them as well. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Barack Obama vowed on Friday to respond to a devastating cyber attack on Sony Pictures that he blamed on North Korea and scolded the Hollywood studio for caving in to what he described as a foreign dictator imposing censorship in America. Obama said the cyber attack caused a lot of damage to Sony, but that the company could not have let itself be intimidated into halting the public release of the movie The Interview, a lampoon portraying the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Obama told a news conference, we will respond, we'll respond proportionately, and we'll respond in a place and time and manner that we choose. Earlier, the Federal Bureau of Investigation announced that it had determined that North Korea was behind the hacking of Sony, saying Pyongyang's actions fell outside the bounds of acceptable state behavior. Obama said North Korea appeared to have acted alone. Washington began consultations with Japan, China, South Korea, and Russia seeking their assistance in reigning in North Korea. It was the first time the United States has directly accused 
accused another country of a cyber attack of such magnitude on American soil and set up a possible new confrontation between longtime foes Washington and Pyongyang. The destructive nature of the attack and threats from the hackers that led the Hollywood studio to pull the movie set it apart from previous cyber intrusions. A North Korean diplomat at the United Nations in New York said Pyongyang had nothing to do with the attack. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports astronauts on the International Space Station have a new socket wrench, but it did not come via cargo ship, it was emailed from Earth, beamed up into space and then printed by the crew of the International Space Station using their new 3D printer. In late September, the first zero-gravity 3D printer was delivered to the International Space Station by a SpaceX resupply mission. In November, astronauts finally got around to assembling the machine, designed and manufactured by California-based company Made in Space. Astronauts successfully tested the printer in late November, and now the new technology is being used with a purpose. NASA predicted that the space station might become a machine shop with the rival of its new printer, and sure enough, the first printed product of note is a ratcheting socket wrench. It's the first time hardware has ever been emailed into space. What began as a simple CAD file on computers on Earth created by engineers and computer scientists at Made in Space is now a usable plastic wrench aboard the International Space Station. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. On June 4th, 1919, a group of bold, passionate men took it upon themselves to pass the Women's Suffrage Act, finally granting women the right to vote that they were too frail and helpless to achieve on their own. Having long watched women struggle to stand up for their right to choose elected officials, the strong and capable men decided to intercede and aid their weak female counterparts. And on June 6, 1972, David Bowie's release of his concept album, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, kickstarted the glam rock genre and led to such spin off trends as glam medicine, glam sports, and glam architecture, all culminating in the 1976 presidential glam election. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of French King John II, history will forever remember the great names of Alexander and Napoleon and Washington. But what about me, John II of France? I did stuff too. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome back. More live Saturday edition continues here, and we'll take your calls about anything at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Coming up, massive. Gun civil disobedience. I like the sound of that. Uh, civil disobedience, I think, is a very important thing for activists to keep in their quiver of options. And apparently there's been a record-setting instance of civil disobedience. Mark has the story. He'll be telling us about that. And, of course, you can bring up anything. We've got Skype at username lrn.fm. And that's where we're going to go to start things out this hour with Dalek and Cap is on the line with us here via Skype. Dalek, you're on Free Talk Live. Thank you, guys. How are you guys doing? Good, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Okay, so um, when I was listening listening to the uh, the Seasetting Institute and when they were calling in, and they were talking about the medical team and how they were trying to have a little bit of blockade. I thought about uh, the uh, there was a Vice documentary on like the future of war. Um, on the what? Uh, on the future of war, uh, okay. basically what happened is that uh, that there was a an infirmary that has like a medical bay, a medical bay, and uh, they can fix in fix you up and patch you up. It's a, a Chinese boat that's basically that can be mobile. Um, I was when I was kind of thinking about that, maybe that could happen. It's just I don't know how to uh, since. Maybe most people are kind of come from the U.S. I don't know if it's going to be U.S. based or European based. I have no idea. 
You're talking about the boat that's being proposed by the folks from the Seasteading Institute that would provide medical services to people, uh, presumably around the world, but it would be primarily based off off of uh, some country's shore. You're trying to determine which uh, which area it will be based. It, yeah, I mean, like when I would consider that because I know that that the infirmary that was on the Vice documentary was that it was Chinese. It was a Chinese infirmary. Um, I just don't know if it's going to be, since it would be probably, presumably, European-based or uh Well, I don't know. They were talking about something off of the coast of California, it sounded like. So I would guess they would put this thing wherever it is the market would demand. I mean, wherever it is that would be most convenient for people to somehow get to uh, would likely be where it'll end up. Yeah, they've got medical tourism where one can go to, you know, Thailand, um, and or you can go to uh, you know a variety of different countries out there. India, I know, has it. Um, what was that uh, advertisement we had? Um, Asia Run Like Hell Guide. Yeah, Asia Run Like Hell Guide dot com. We had advertised with us at one point, and they were talking about taking people to Thailand. There's medical tourism already if people want that. Um, I think what people want is something close to their house that doesn't seem so foreign to them. Oklahoma City has the Oklahoma Surgery Center, and that's really free market if you go to their is website. Is that the one taking Bitcoin? I believe they are taking uh, Bitcoin, yeah. Cool. Very, very Amazing. innovative stuff going on there. But nothing like that going on in California. So if you can have mm-hmm. that you know, off the coast of San Francisco or Los Angeles, you have an incredible marketplace sitting within a few miles of you, and all you have to do is get them out there for whatever surgery they want. Exactly. Dalek, anything else you want to share tonight? Nothing really much. I'm just uh, kind of concerning. Maybe it could happen. I mean, just for getting in a hospital outside of, uh, you know, from the States, I think it could happen. It's just uh, a matter of when and if. Well, it, it already, I already said if. It's just a matter of when. Basically. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate the optimism. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know, somebody else who's pretty optimistic, all things considered, uh, Ron Paul. You got to hand it to that guy having spent so many years in Washington, D.C. He's finally escaped. Uh, it's not like, you know, Ron Paul being in D.C. was actually increasing liberty for anyone, but at the very least, he was talking about it and bringing uh, people's attention to the ideas of freedom. And he's still doing that uh, as just regular old Ron Paul. God bless him. No longer representative Ron Paul. He's writing over at his Ron Paul Institute as republished by LewRockwell.com. And this is, all I want for Christmas is a real government, says Ron. The political class breathed a sigh of relief on Saturday, that's last Saturday, when the U.S. Senate averted a government shutdown by passing the $1.1 trillion omnibus spending bill. Yay. This year's omnibus resembles omnibus. omnibuses. Omnibus, yeah, it just really <laughs> sets my heart at ease when I hear that word. I have no idea what it means, but it just sounds It's big. It gigantic. Big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we at the government have decided to spend more of yeah. your money money because we're so good at it because 200 years of of uh, spending up to this point where we've actually never paid off the debt we've shown it how competent we are this isn't just any old bus this is the omnibus omnibus <laughs> uh so it re- resembles omnibuses of christmas past and that it was drafted in secret was full of special interest deals oh, yeah. and disguised spending increases and was voted on before most members could possibly read it. All right. The debate over the omnibus may have made for entertaining political theater, but the outcome was never in doubt. Most House and Senate members are so terrified of another government shutdown, they'd rather vote for a 1,774-page bill they've not read than risk even a one- or two-day government shutdown. Right. They call this the do-nothing Congress because, uh, you know, Congress gets nothing done. Thank God! I mean, what does what do you expect a group of lawyers with uh, a nearly unlimited power to do that's good. I have no expectations besides the fact that they'll just continue to destroy people's freedom. I think it's fascinating that people in the United States, and this is true around the world, but I mean, this is largely in a U.S. based show, um, that they call, that they use the term politician as synonymous with thief and liar, but that they ex- somehow expect the government to do good for them. I mean, what kind of backwards thinking is that? There's just not much thinking involved there, Mark, I don't think. Yeah, it's faith. You were told for 13 years while you were in government school that the government does good stuff. Yeah, it's sausage making process, but uh, you know it's ugly when they do it. But you know, it's all in all, it's pretty good. No, nope, it's not. It's pretty bad.
The political class's shutdown phobia is particularly puzzling, says Ron Paul, because a shutdown only closes 20% of the federal government. <laughs> as the American it people, just sounds bad. Yeah, as the American people learn, well, sounds good to me, but from the politician's perspective, they don't want to be uh, painted with responsibility for the shutdown. They'd hate to be looked at as, uh, as, as, well, I don't know, lazy. Uh, as the American people learned during the government shutdown of 2013, the country can survive with 20% less government. Instead of panicking over a limited shutdown, a true pro-liberty Congress would be eagerly drawing up plans to permanently close most of the federal government, starting with the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve's inflation... He does hate the Federal Reserve. It's a big problem. Oh, it is a huge it's problem. A I think it's problem number one, but it's difficult to explain to people. Uh, when the government... Monopolies tend to provide poor service, have bad innovation, and why in the world would you want to give the government a monopoly on money? I mean, money is just a medium of exchange. Can't people compete against the government when it comes to money? No. I, no, I would... no, they can't. Bernard von Nothaus uh, was sentenced to three years probation for uh, supposedly— what are they, they called it counterfeiting. Uh, they, they, they claim he was counterfeiting U.S. currency when, in point of fact, he was creating his own original currency made called of the silver. Liberty Dollar. Yeah, made of silver, right. something of value as opposed to paper and pot metal like uh, our money is made of. And I just want to know, if you're out there in radio land listening to me and you have a reason why the U.S. government needs, and basically, since the U.S. government is tied to the, petroleum, the petrodollar, uh, I mean, you know, the most business is done in U.S. dollars. It basically has a monopoly on world markets mm. in the U.S. dollar. Tell me why I benefit from this, why this is good, why I should not want competition in the area of money. And if you can't, then why in the world would you support the Federal Reserve and the United States government uh, handing over their money-making power to a group of unaccountable bankers? Well, I wouldn't support it if the Federal Reserve were shut down and the government then took control of, uh, of all of the money aspects. I mean, that wouldn't I don't think really the, be an improvement. I don't think it? monopolies are a good idea generally. People, yeah. you know, rarely, rarely is the marketplace served well by a monopoly. I, say I can shut tell you who's down. served well by monopolies, the people who have the monopoly. Shut it down and replace it with nothing. Let the market decide what the money should be. Going on with the story from LouRockwell.com and Ron Paul, the Federal Reserve's inflationary policies not only degrade the average American standard of living, they also allow Congress to run up huge deficits. Not to mention uh, that, and he doesn't mention it here, but the Federal Reserve also empowers the government to expand beyond its ability to directly tax, meaning that when they print money up, they can just use that to grow the government without actually having to raise the supposed tax rate. More coming up here in moments. 855-450 free. You may share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. 
It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. You dial toll-free here to bring up anything that you like. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come tonight. Of course, you can call in about anything you'd like to discuss. On the way, Mark will tell us about massive gun civil disobedience. Yeah, I was going out to deal with my outdoor wood boiler today, and the snow was crunching under my feet, and I thought... It sure is going to be nice to head off to Acapulco at the end of February. I'm going for Anarchapulco. It's it's an event put on by Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante, and he's building Acapulco as the new Liberty destination. And I want to see for myself. I figure Anarchapulco is an event, and it's at the perfect time to uh, to, to go take a look. Speakers, of course, are going to include, obviously, Jeff Berwick and Angel Clark, who she moved there recently. But Roger Veer will be there, the guy known as Bitcoin Jesus. Cody Wilson, the creator of the Liberator, that uh, printable plastic gun that we got so much news about last year. Nima V, the uh, Liberty rap artist, objectivist girl, obviously, talking about objectivism. Luke Rudkowski, who is a Liberty-oriented journalist. And Dana Martin expert in homes excuse me unschooling a specific type of homeschooling called unschooling ernie hancock the creator of freedoms phoenix and a whole bunch more so what more reason do you need to go to acapulco in february it's going to be awesome hotels are very reasonably priced this this time of year um tickets are less than a hundred dollars if you register by christmas there are going to be workshops all week but the action really heats up on the weekend february the 27th through march the 1st is the main event, but of course there's the workshops um, earlier in the week. I'm um, very interested in the unschooling stuff that might be going on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to that event. Depends on how ticketing goes for my wife and I. But go take a look at the schedule and see what works for you. It's anarchapolco.com, and it's the new Liberty Destination. Let me repeat it for you nice and slow so you can uh, type it out, and Google will find it for you too. anarchapolco.com. 
All right, let's go to your calls and thoughts. Crichton is on the line in Kentucky. You're on Free Talk Live. Crichton. How's it going, guys? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I wanted to talk about um, uh, the normalization of diplomatic relations between the federal government of the United States and that of Cuba. Yeah, this is an interesting topic, and it's getting a lot of press right now. We did cover it last night, but I'd love to uh, talk about it further, so go ahead. Yeah, what you didn't talk about last night, um, I think that what's been overlooked is that President Obama has done this correct thing for a entirely wrong reason. Okay. Um, That's what the government does. When they do something correct, it's usually for the wrong reason. (laughs) And, and I think I know what the wrong reason is. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's related to a, a geopolitical play between Russia and and the U.S. government. Well, Russian government and U.S. government. Okay. Um, we found I found out early, uh, yesterday that this whole they're having talks, secret talks, for about eighteen months, which is about the same period of time that the Ukraine has been uh, been. We've been the, the 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 federal government of the United States has been messing with uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. Um, yeah, and I think you got to keep in mind that uh, uh, a lot of uh, geopolitics involves spheres of influence around general areas, and of course, Cuba is really close to the United States. It's only ninety miles away, and the Ukraine is even closer to. Russia, um, and as we mess with their their sphere of severe influence, as our government messes with the government's sphere of influence of Russia, um, they in turn do it to us. And there have been you know not widely reported uh, events between Russia and Cuba as well, because they never really had bad relations yeah. between Russia and Cuba, even though Russia isn't really communist anymore. Mm-hmm. And Cuba really is. Uh, they don't really dislike each other. So uh, I think this is Obama's attempt to make friends closer to home as best he can. He's he's being outplayed in a uh, geopolitical chessboard, and this is his move. Okay, you know that seems like a reasonable speculation. I think it's, it's reasonable uh, as any other. I think it's as it, it, it fine as reason as any for people in Cuba to have a better life. Um, I have heard people sort of caterwauling about this, and I have yet to hear a what I what I consider to be a good reason uh, for to not loosen the, a good reason to uh, not re- listen the restrictions. Yeah, so there's Cuba. there's certainly some restrictions that are still in place, and I tend to think that uh, the government when it re- when it lo- gets rid of some restrictions but keeps other restrictions that it's picking winners and losers. Like for instance, if you have five kids, you line them up on the uh, starting line, you tell two of them they can go. Um, and run towards the the starting line. The others, they have to wait 10 seconds. The two who uh, got a chance to run are going to do a lot better than the three that had to stand stay behind. Crichton, thanks for your call tonight. You know, just to summarize, Mark, from our show last night, because we did bring this topic up, we talked quite a bit about it, and okay. I also threw out that question at, at that time, a very similar question. Like, if you are in favor of continuing the embargo against Cuba, which, by the way, it's still partially continued. There's still travel restrictions, and they've just lessened some of the restrictions at this point, as well as done a prisoner exchange. Um, the Cuban government has also promised to make Internet access more available to their people, as well as releasing dozens of their own political prisoners mm-hmm. back into Cuba. So there's some interesting things that have happened here, but by no means has the embargo been entirely lifted, although I would like to see that. And so my question was, you know, well, if you are against the lifting of the embargo to any extent, we'd love to hear from you as to why that is. We didn't get much of uh, of an intelligent response. I read some of the I Facebook. hate Obama and stuff. You know, there was that. <laughs> uh, so there was just kind of this response that you pr- could presume was coming from the right, uh, that anything Obama does is bad, so that's why we don't like it. And what's he going to do next? Is he going to uh, the kind of the position? That we, we read some of the quotes from some of the talk show hosts out there like Michael Savage and uh, Rush Limbaugh. Since no one was bothering to call in and explain it to us, we figured we'd go to the, you know, the other talk show hosts. 
photos and see what they were. Right. Rush Limbaugh has never about. seen a Democratic president do anything he's liked once. Right. And so the general uh, viewpoint from the other talk show hosts was, you know, sort of this fear mongering viewpoint of, my God, everything in the world's changing because of Barack Obama. And what's he going <laughs> to do next? You know, is he going to make it so that uh, lessen the restrictions on North Korea? You know, that was the kind of response. And then from the well, other side. Well, I hope side, they do lessen the restrictions on North Korea because they lessened, they lessened I agree. The, a Republican president, lessened the restrictions on uh, China. And look, you can say whatever you want about the Chinese government, but you can't say that the Chinese uh, people don't have a better life than they did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Let's go to John. He's in Minnesota uh, listening to WNMT. Hey, John. Yeah. Uh, what, what about this uh, deal? Who, who suggested this to Obama to do this? I don't know. Do you expect me to know that? Yeah, well, uh, the Pope uh, was over here talking to him a while back, and I don't know if he, <laughs> he, uh, he just told him to do it or suggested it. All but, right, uh, let's go into the realm of wild speculation. Let's say the Pope well, told him to well, do no, it. No, it's it's being officially reported that the Pope did help sort of broker the deal. He did say deal. some stuff like that, but popes before him have said that too. I mean, it's no shortage of popes that have said, hey, let's see fewer restrictions, and I think yeah. embargoes certainly hurt poor people. John, if you had more to say, hang on, we can bring him back. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So there was the viewpoint of Obama, it's bad, and then there was another viewpoint. I'll summarize that coming up. Free Talk Live. Your thoughts are welcome. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. People love photography, but when we thought about photography, we realized one thing. Humans are limited to looking at photos with our eyes. That's a problem, right? So we made an app, PicSong, the first program that turns your photos into music if you want to do that for some reason. It puts the power in your hands. You get to decide why you need this. I can't tell you why you need this. It's not my job. Who is this app for? Maybe it's for students, or artists, or blind people. But can it turn your music into photos? No, it can't. Do you get to keep the original photo? No, it gets deleted. Always back up your photos before using PicSong. This is the Onion News Network. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Hey, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You do have to send a contact request first if you want to do the Skype thing. We'll approve it, and then once it's approved, you'll be easily able to call us up on Skype whenever you darn well please. Uh, so Skype username, lrn.fm. Phone lines are 855 855- 450 free in freedom's cause it is an an incredible audio experience it is a two cd set that um, i got recently i listened to it with my son jack and my wife we were actually doing some uh work on the house and jack was enthralled he uh sat wrapped listening to this uh this audio while you know my wife and i worked and it's really great what it does is, is it's, well, it's the story of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. It has its own score, which is incredible to think that, a, you know, something besides a movie, that the kind of money to get a, to create a score was dro- dropped into this. It can't it's, be cheap. No, it can't be. And it has huge actors. Um, for instance, uh, James Cosmo from Braveheart, uh, Game of Thrones, Sons of Anarchy. Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Gandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, uh, Joanne Froggett, the, uh, the, the, the head maid gal from Downton Abbey, the ladies maid. She is, uh, she's wonderful. She does this strong female character. This is good for boys and girls. Um, frankly, it's good for adults and children. I think that history buffs like me pardon me, are going to be particularly interested in it. But the stories of freedom really resonate with people. They... Pardon me, Ian. I've... Yeah, so uh, Mark's having a tough time over there. Anyway, infreedomscause.com is where you can go to check this thing out and uh, get their family four-pack for half price with our discount code. The code is FTL. That's code FTL over at infreedomscause.com. We, of course, will talk to you about whatever happens to be on your mind. We were discussing um, just a moment ago the Cuban slash U.S. de-escalation. There's some uh, level of diplomatic goings on that is happening. They're going to open up an embassy for the United States in Havana. There's uh, some restrictions that are going to be lessened. The embargo itself is not going away. That has to be done by an act of Congress. So Barack Obama apparently has done what he can to advance uh, conversation between the two states. And that may result in, you know, the more ability for people in Cuba to engage in banking activities in in the U.S. and vice versa. Fewer travel restrictions, although the bulk of them will still be in play. And I say this is great news. I think this is one of the best things that uh, Barack Obama has done, even if it was, you know, for the wrong reasons. I don't know what well, his his real rationale was. I don't it, know but. the legality of this. I mean, you know, there's Barack Obama's, in my opinion, stepped beyond the roles of the executive in more than one circumstance in the last uh, seven years or six years or how long he's been doing this. And th- that's, uh, you know, that's what that is. So far, no one's done anything about it. In this circumstance, it's hard for me to get too bent out of shape, If even if he did step out of the role, um, you know, beyond the constitutional role of... Uh, of well, of, even he's saying that the the Congress has to actually repeal, repeal the actual the embargo. Sure. embargo. They do. So John is on the line here. He was saying that the Pope uh, was involved as well, which there were mainstream media reports saying that. What else did you want to share about that, John? Well, that, that was it, mainly, uh, that uh, wh- whether— Why does that uh, seem relevant to you, that the Pope was involved? 
Well, because uh, he 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 uh, claims to be the ruler of the uh, Christian world, you know, Does and he? Uh, the uh-huh. highest the highest authority. And vicarious fill idea means he's he's in vicar. He's he's in place of the Messiah on earth right now. Does it's anybody still thing. believe that nonsense? Oh, I don't believe it myself. Either. No, but does anyone? But, but, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, are there... I mean, how, Catholics, what, what, do they what, believe that? What's the percentage of people or Catholics that could possibly believe that the Pope is really much more than a well-studied priest? Well, well, the, the, the Pope believes it. You and, think so? Because I don't yeah, think he seems so. very down to earth. Yeah, yeah well, he, he's one of the better ones that... Uh, what, what about the one that lasted for 30 days? That was uh, going to get some different changes in there. You know, it was kind of interesting. You know? hmm. Who's this? Yeah, I don't know was who that, that recent? was. Was that Pope John Paul the the first? That was a few 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 years back. It might have been fifteen or twenty years back. It yeah. was one one pope just lasted thirty days in there. And, yeah, yeah, I try they, not to pay too much attention to well, the pope. Well, you weren't alive probably or darn close to it. Um, they these. Um, you know, this is they 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 take old people into this job. <laughs> they don't want them to actually be able to do much. John, thanks for the call yeah. tonight. Let's go to your uh, calls and thoughts here. The toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. We've got Al. He's in Bangor, in Maine. Hey, Al, you're on Free Talk Live. You have a very incredibly naive, womanish view of the world. Maybe you can define the word enemy. What does the word? Sorry, enemy? did you say a uh, womanish? You're nothing but a girl, yes. Ian. What is that supposed yeah. to mean? Are you suggesting all women are naive? Um, that's beside the point. I think we know. Need, I think we know just it? about everything we need to know about you. Go ahead with your thoughts, Al. Now, can you define the word "enemy" for me? What is an enemy? Uh, sounds like somebody who's arrayed against you. Yeah, is Cuba an enemy? Would you consider Fidel and Raul Castro enemies? Um, I think that they're probably enemies to their people, but to enemy to me, I don't think they're much of a threat. Yeah, they're to me, more the uh, the more enemies are uh, likely in in Washington D.C. They are the ones yeah. who are threatening yes. us regularly. Yes, yes, my dear. And they have North Korean subs, possibly <laughs> carrying up, nuclear, nuclear warheads, docking in Cuba. They're a terrorist state. There are nuclear no, warheads me. right here in this country. What did? How do you define a terrorist state? Because to me, all states are terrorism. Well, that's preposterous. No, idea. it's not. It's the definition of terrorism. You, you no, are the one calling not. about definitions. How do you define if terrorism? You, if you uh, call all nations terrorist states, uh, including yeah. the Vatican, Luxembourg, then you uh, lose the idea of terrorism. Okay. It, why don't you tell me, you, since we gave you a definition when you asked us, why don't you tell us what the definition of terrorism is? Uh, it, terrorism is uh, violence directed towards a political end. Mm. Or threats of violence, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. No. It would well, be I mean, terror isn't really... Violence. T- terror isn't really violence. Terror is like what could happen, not what does happen. Well, it can be violence, and it can be the threat of violence. Now, look, doesn't that define to a T what the state is? Isn't the state an organization that uses violence and the threat of violence toward political no, ends? Absolutely not. No. Why not? Exists. Stop paying your taxes. See if you don't get a little violence coming your way, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're so naive, Al. You're, you're just so a, naive. The, you know, um, the, the Harriet Tubman the said that she'd three, freed a thousand slaves and she'd have freed a thousand more if they would have known they were slaves. You don't even know that the organization yeah, calling that, itself the state will throw you in jail if you refuse to participate. You? You're so willing in your enslavement that, uh, you right. know. You won't even call it what it is. This, take a mocking tone. The state exists to preserve order. And That's what the, the people who work for the state <laughs> want you to believe. Al, do you work for the state? Um, the alternative is Al, anarchy. do you work for the state? You don't know what the alternative is. Well, There's no alternative been offered. Well, you're... Now I see why you side with Fidel and Obama, because essentially— I don't side with Obama for anything. Al, I'm against the state. I don't know how long you've been listening to Free Talk Live, but I consider all states to be the enemy of human freedom. That's right. You're a leftist, like in the French Revolution. (laughs) All right, okay. I'll be a leftist. That's fine by me. I don't really care left or right. Mark, you're a registered Republican. I'm I'm an elected Republican. (laughs) Al's sitting out there lobbing bombs, and he hasn't even done anything. You remove the state, you have, uh, in essence, mob rule. 
I'm and pretty sure that's rule, what the state is, Al. It's just rule of the jungle. That's why you can say that you love freedom, but you're willing to give money to a person who executes people. Who's that? For possessing a Bible. That would be Fidel Castro. I don't Castro. give money to Fidel Castro. You're I don't even give money to the federal government. You don't know a thing about me, Al. Thanks for the call. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. The suggestion is is because allowing free people to trade in from the United States to Cuba and that there's, of course, going to be the Cuban monopoly in, in, the, uh, in the way, well, they're going to take Fidel money. will get a cut of yeah. it. 855-450-FREE. More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit Herbalhealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Herbalhealer.com, healing the world with nature. One person at a time, since 1988. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309.
This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. Dial in toll-free to bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian here. And Mark. And you can, of course, join us over at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then please get your shopping taken care of. It is the season for uh, holiday shopping, and it's not too late to get delivery by Christmas if you get your shopping done over through Amazon over at shop.freetalklive.com. You enter through shop.freetalklive.com. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and, of course, Amazon US. You click into the right Amazon for you. And then it's your regular Amazon shopping experience, what you're used to with the great super saver shipping deals and Amazon Prime and all the great reviews, the huge selection. It's all there, the same price as you're used to. It's just you're entering through our affiliate link, so Amazon gives us a cut of the sale. Uh, it's really a great way to get your shopping taken care of and help Free Talk Live all at once over at shop.freetalklive.com. That's, again, shop.freetalklive.com. Right back into your calls and thoughts. Cuba is on a lot of people's minds uh, today due to the news coming out of uh, Washington, D.C. this week about a, a de-escalation of the conflict between the United States and Cuba that's been going on now for over 50 years. Yeah, I don't think you can argue that uh, an embargo is anything but an act of war. Absolutely. And so the embargo has yet to be lifted. However, there have been some loosening of restrictions, and I say that's a good thing. The last caller we had was fear-mongering that somehow uh, you know, if people start doing business with folks in Cuba, that that's just going to enrich uh, Fidel Castro, or I guess he's dead. I'm sorry. Raul Castro. No, he's not dead. He's not dead? Not yet, I thought no. he was dead. I thought he was dead. I thought he kicked it, it was like close. two years ago. I didn't realize that. I apologize. I reported yesterday that Fidel Castro was dead. Uh, Raul Castro, who's been in charge of the country for a couple of years, ever since he was he was on a deathbed, it seemed like, at one yes, time. He was quite ill, and that's why okay. he turned over um, rulership. But the... As I understand, has he been seen in public poking, poking around? So, uh, yeah. So, okay, yeah, so it's not one of those seen. things where the the dear leader is still alive, but hasn't actually been seen in public he's for eighty eight years. So um, anyway, the point being that I think it's a good thing because you know if you start having uh, products and you start having people cross borders, then ideas go with them. And we can, by trading with and interacting with the people in Cuba, help spread the ideas of freedom over there. I mean, that to me is an invaluable thing Agreed. to be able to do. The Castro brothers are sitting pretty either way. Right. You're not going to make their life better or worse by uh, what you do. They have a great life over there. They get what they want because they rule over people like a bunch of parasites. Sure. Just like any ruling class. Let's go to Steve in uh, Lexington, South Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Steve. Hey, Ian. Hey, Mark. Welcome, sir. Hey, uh, I thought Al was going to steal my thunder when he asked for an enemy definition. Um, and I, I don't like to think of myself as a fear monger, but I do like to make sure that because the sovereignty of America is protected as well as our citizens are protected. Well, you're already and, starting uh, out the right way to have a conversation. It doesn't have that sort okay. of condescending, why don't you go ahead and define what an enemy is for me sound, right. which is a terrible right. way to have a conversation about anything. But it makes for good talk radio. Go right ahead. Well, I, I'd just like to say, if you get be patient with me for a second, I've no got problem. three little boys. I use illustrations a lot. Um, but it... it in my mind, I, I kind of think about a prison illustration, and you know, you got a bunch of prisoners, and I, I think if you if you know anything about the prison system, when spend eight years in one, in fact, okay, <laughs> outstanding. I hope it was a, uh, a guard. <laughs> nope, no, I was a, I was a convict. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, you, and you know the the dangers of uh, if, of that uh, particular uh, place when when guards are inspecting, and and you would agree that prisons are pretty well controlled. Yep. And, and you're amazed at the things that you can find during inspection of, of, of uh, a prisoner's cell. And if you're if you're one of the people that are in charge of the prisoners, uh, you got to make sure your back's not turned. Um, and I think I've seen lots of guards, their backs turned. I mean, the last person you want to do violence against in a prison is a guard. Well, absolutely. But it happens. I mean, it, and and guard, guards know that they need to be on their game when they're when they're in the prison system. All right. So how are you going to tie but this my, into my, Cuba and the United States? Well, because I, I think what Americans tend to do is we turn the blame back on us and we think, well, why is the embargo in place? It's not Cuba's fault, but I, I would argue that it is Cuba's fault that the embargo is in place. 
it's and I and I, I would argue I'm that not, Cuba doesn't uh, exist. I would argue that there are uh, you know a group of people that rule over some uh, poor individuals in an island that is south of Florida. Well, great. Well, thank you for making that point because the same people that were in charge when they had Russia's uh, invitation to bring nuclear missiles yep. that were going to be trained on us, the same folks that did that are still the rulers of that country. Okay. Which I think why which I think it's a good idea that America wants to promote democracy ac- across the world. Now, I would I would give us a failing mark on when we promote democracy, we don't stick around long enough to make sure it takes root, i.e. Iraq, i.e. Afghanistan. Um, and I think that's a weakness of America is, is we're not – we don't have the stomach to see a mission through. I don't think it looks and, anything and like a goes- democracy. I don't think America projects on the world anything that looks uh, particularly attractive. It probably looks a lot to them like imperialism. Well, I'm, I, I think it's very hard. Now, I'm I'm a former military member. Okay. So I trained I trained very hard to fight the the war in Iraq, and you know, by God's grace, I didn't have to go do that. Okay. However, you know, you're taking somebody that's been under you know, a dictator's thumb, and just like in Iraq, the same in Cuba, and when you hand them freedom, they don't know what to do with it. They need to be walked through the path of what freedom means. And I would say maybe they view it as imperialist, but do you feel like an imperialist by being an American? I'm not an imperialist. I I don't feel like – so I I refuse to equate myself with the United States government. I believe that the United States government, that Washington, D.C. is a city-state that rules over – that claims to rule over at least the United States, if not the world, um, in the way that they they act and conduct themselves. That the ideals of America are completely undermined by the politicians that inhabit Washington, D.C. So I I think that if there ever – was a country that embodied the ideas of America, and I'm not sure that that's the case. I mean, maybe this is just stuff that I was taught in school, but if there ever was, that it is gone. It's long gone. That uh, what the United States military is used for these days is to uh, really work for the corporate interests, the people that pay the, uh, that, that give the, the campaign uh, money to these politicians, that that's what it really comes down to is, is that it's a mercenary force. Uh, Smedley Butler, who was a two-time winner of the Medal of Honor. He said as much in his book, War is a Racket, and I don't think it's changed one whit. In fact, I think it's gotten worse. Right, and I think that's why you hear, um, and and I think I would equate myself um, pretty close to the Tea Party, is that we do need to make the trudge back to our founding principles of this country. And, um, you know, and that's that's where we understand that we have a much bigger argument than we're going to solve on a conversation on the radio. But that's what we need to get back to. Do you think the founding is is more embargo, bigger government or smaller government? Is an embargo bigger government or smaller government? Is embargo embodied in larger government or smaller government? In larger government. There you go. So I think that uh, being a Tea Party member, you should be for smaller government. Therefore, let's get rid of the embargo. Right. But at the same time, you know, you put your you put your guard down against an enemy like Al was trying to come up with. How is selling some product to uh, somebody or buying product from somebody putting your guard down against Fidel Castro well, or Raul Castro? Our, again, I go back to my point is we're putting our guard down against somebody who is already proven by their alliance with Russia and their invitation to, to mount weapons of mass destruction 80 miles off of our coast. You're talking uh, about the 60s, you know, I don't right? Know if you notice, Do you but, ever forgive? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you ever noticed, but there's all kinds of products that come out of Vietnam and are delivered here to the United States, and they killed, you know, 50,000 U.S. troops uh, a few decades ago. Has the guard been let down? Are we worried about Vietnamese well, terrorism uh, or whatever it is that you're worried about, whatever fear-mongering well, you're doing bigger, here? There's a little bit of a bigger pond between us and Vietnam than there is between <laughs> Cuba and America. Well, well an enemy's an I- enemy, right? Why does the distance like matter? I mean, if they were so dedicated to destroying the U.S. capitalism or whatever it is, then uh, they've, they've done a terrible job by trading with us. Yeah, I guess the bottom line is we would have to be sold, as, as an American, I would have to be sold by our politicians that things have changed in Cuba. And What the and hell right do the now, politicians know? They barely know what's going on in Washington, D.C. They don't read their own no. bills. How about we just err on the side of freedom? How's that sound? Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, with the... 
the old the old school American attitude is peace through superior firepower. I'm 100 uh, percent for that, but you know, there's another old saying, which is is when uh, when when products and services don't cross borders, troops do. So embargoes are an act of war. You'd agree with that, right? I, I would to an extent, yes. Okay. But, um, Steve, thanks for your call, I, man. I, I appreciate it. we got to get some other folks on here, and that's what we're going to do. Right. Coming up in hour number three, your calls are on the way. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I mean, somebody earlier said Cuba's a terrorist state. Well, where's all the terrorism against the U.S.? I don't see it. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,199, silver around $15.97, and Bitcoin is trading around $310.73. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, in his final speech on the floor of the Senate, Senator Mark Udall discussed an additional secret CIA report on torture, which he called a smoking gun. The report is known as the Panetta Review, named for former CIA Director Leon Panetta. Following the initiation of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on CIA torture, the CIA themselves began an internal report to anticipate arguments made by the committee. Now, this report was mistakenly included in some 6 million pages of classified records that were given to the committee for their investigation. Vice News filed a FOIA request to obtain the report, but a lawyer with the CIA claimed the documents were intended for CIA eyes only and are exempt from FOIA disclosure. President Obama officially signed an executive order Thursday that will establish a task force for reviewing law enforcement practices. Obama first announced the panel last month and will give them until March 2nd to present a list of recommendations. The president had previously announced the co-chair of the panel would be Philadelphia Police Chief Charles Ramsey. In addition to the panel, there's also a White House review on police militarization expected to be released soon. On Thursday, the attorney generals of Oklahoma and Nebraska filed a lawsuit in the U.S. Supreme Court 
arguing that Colorado's legal cannabis industry violates the Constitution. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt said the states surrounding Colorado are unable to enforce their state's policy against cannabis because of Colorado's recently passed Amendment 64. The suit says the new law violates the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, which gives federal law precedence over state law. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Bean is brought to you by Marjorie Wildcrafts Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Austin, Texas Liberty activist and conscious hip-hop artist Mark Jenkins is producing an online program about police brutality and police accountability activism. The show, titled Watching You, Watching Me, will be in a format similar to TV's Tosh.0, where the host gives commentary and shows highlights of online videos. Know Your Rights Trainings, Corrupt Cop of the Month, and Prison Watch are just a few of the segments that will be featured on the program. Mark Jenkins says the goal of the project is to educate people on their constitutional rights and to show them how to fight back against the oppressors. Jenkins has launched a GoFundMe campaign to help raise funds for the project. He's also selling Watching You, Watching Me swag, such as shirts and hoodies, a promo CD, and other apparel. An international architecture studio has unveiled a concept for a retirement community in Singapore, which would promote an active lifestyle and on-site farming. Spark has said the home farm is designed to generate discussion about the many potentials of combining urban farming with senior living. 20% of Singapore's population is expected to be 65 and older by 2030. With a reported 90% of Singapore's food imported, the nation is struggling to find ways to sustainably feed an aging population. The community would offer opportunity for growing vegetables in a variety of designs. Residents would not be forced to work to live in the community, but could offset costs by contributing work. The Liberty Bean is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Join Corey Moore and his co-hosts as they tackle the topics of the day. The Corey Moore Show, Friday nights at 10 at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. During a curt Skype session earlier this afternoon, local Williamsburg resident, 29-year-old Cormac Flanagan, reminded his mother to, quote, try and be more careful after she forgot to pay his cell phone bill. Mom, the phone company called today about my cell phone bill. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. No, m Mom, I'm not mad, but you had to stay on top of these things, you know. I know, you I know. You can't keep waiting until the last night like this. Well, I don't want to have to keep reminding you every month. You know, I need my phone. I use it. All, every every day, I need I my phone. I'm, I I'm constantly I'm, I'm so it. bad. I'm I'm really sorry. sorry. I'll, I'll get on it. Today. All right, you know, just so you know, you know, this really easy thing you can do. You know, there's this online auto pay. You just deducts in your bank account every month. Yeah, quite yeah. Easy. I, I know. Okay. I know. I, I know. It's fine. I know it's, how it's, to it's, do fine. it's fine. It's fine. Just don't let it become a pattern. You know, I know. I know. I know you can do better than this. Uh, okay. I, I promise. I'll get on it today. Okay. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. Plenty of time for you to call in toll-free to take control of the airwaves. Uh, we've uh, actually not gotten through this piece from Ron Paul where he was uh, talking about what he wants for Christmas. Maybe we'll get the chance to continue that, but we ended up getting sidetracked as tends to happen with Free Talk Live because, you know, it's an open phone show. We'll talk to you about anything you want. Talking about the U.S.-Cuba 
de-escalation, or at least hopefully the beginnings of what we'll see more de-escalation. Right now, uh, there have been some restrictions that have been loosened on diplomatic relations between the U.S. and the Cuban governments. And I'd like to make it clear that while I think this is a good thing because it could lead to more uh, products and people crossing these borders between the two countries, which will lead to ideas crossing, uh, meaning that more freedom-oriented ideas will come to the, the Cuban people. That's what I think uh, is the case here. And either way, whether that happens or not, I still think that as a member of a so-called free country, I should be able to darn well trade with and do business with whoever I want to around the world. That is the crux of this. And for those that support uh, you know, or stand against the de-escalation of this, uh, this embargo situation is you need to answer for me. Like this is the the moral question is that needs to be answered is is who the hell do you think you are to tell me I can't do business with somebody in a foreign country, like yeah exactly you know or I mean, that you can't go and visit in a free country there. free people can do business with other free people no matter where those free people are or you don't have a free country and you don't have free people right in- like that's the moral conundrum you have we're told it's the land of the free but I got a surprise for you folks. That's not what governments are about. Yeah, if you're not free to go wherever it is you want to go, uh, and it's not like you know the Cuban government is preventing U.S. people from coming there. You can go to Cuba, you just can't go there from the United States. Well, as a U.S. citizen, you potentially you're putting yourself into t- some legal harm is if you right? decide to go to Cuba uh, what without happens? permission. What happens if they find out? I well, heard that you well, just get a stern talking to. What does the government do in any circumstance when you, they feel like you've broken their rules? Well, they, they put throw you in, you in jail. That's okay, what they so do. I had not heard that that was the case. That's what I've heard. That, you know, I don't know. I'm petrified of the idea, but I do have a friend who went with the uh, Quaker from my Quaker meeting who mm-hmm. went to, to Cuba on a mission. So I suspect there are some way, ways you can go. Right. I mean, I, my understanding was you would leave from like Canada to go to Cuba, but what you're saying is a good friend of you, mine lives in Canada, and he goes and and parties down in Havana. So now, what you're is saying is, though, part, if you did that and then you came back to the United States, you think they would charge you criminally? I think they potentially could. Um, the other thing that I think that is sort of weird here is is there's there's no embargo from Canada or Europe or lots of other wealthy places. Mm-hmm. So what's really the big whoop? I mean, is the United States really holding all the purse strings <laughs> for Cuba? I mean, Cuba's an asshole because it's run by a bunch of socialist, uh, disgusting gangsters. That's sure. why it's an asshole. It's not because of the United States embargo. And I think getting rid of the embargo can uh, disabuse people of the notion that Cuba uh, the, the, the Cubans of the notion that maybe things stink there because of that. Let's go to your calls and thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Jack is listening in Indiana to WIBC and in Indy. Hey, Jack. Hi, guys. I've been listening to you for a while. First Welcome, time sir. Calling. Thank you. Go you ahead. Know, you, you know, the older I get, it seems like everything, there's a balance. You know, you don't want things to go too far one way or the other. You know, I mean, obviously, you don't want the state to control everything. But then again, on the other hand, you don't want to wind up like Ferguson or Haiti where everybody's running around in chaos. So, I mean, there, there has Wait, to be a Wait, whoa, 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 hold on a sec. Uh, Ferguson and Haiti both have states. And they right, are in that. plentiful supply in Ferguson. I don't know about Haiti. Mark, you visited there. What was it like? Um, you know, out in the out in the hinterland, there's not much, but m- mainly if you get too wealthy, you get robbed. There were some. Uh, Haiti used to be the baseball production capital of the world, and essentially, I think it was Papa Doc uh, that uh, you know just began to attempt to socialize the production of baseballs and made it uh, you know disincentivize businesses from doing business there, and they left. Yeah, but gentlemen, if it wasn't for the National Guard and the police, they would have kept going. Okay, and they would have gotten. If it areas. wasn't for the police, they wouldn't have started. Oh come on! Well, I'm just saying. Well, you th- you think that that's so? Wait a second. Well, all right. Well, what do you want to do with a guy that robs a convenience store clerk, shoves him in the throat? What are you going to do with that guy? Just let him go? I don't think that that's what people are, are arguing. You don't think that anybody is out on the streets of Ferguson because they want armed robbers to go free, do you? No, but you have to have somebody. Come and take care of them. Agreed. I mean, have have 100%. To I agree with okay. you 100%. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying that what the people of Ferguson attend, you know, the people that are protesting out there, they're using this as a foil. They're saying that uh, this is an, uh, yet another unarmed black man. And a lot of people will get behind something uh, because it it's the time and the place for it. Uh, when I see this Eric Gardner situation in New York City, I see a much better 
a sort of politically a much better situation than the Michael Brown situation in Ferguson. But sure. people well, it's are not better. It's just more clear. Well, it's more it's clear. More people, obvious what happened. People are, um, you know, people are sick of what. For one, they're sick of poor customer service when it comes to police. It is absolutely, positively ridiculous that in 2014, in the most technologically advanced country in the world, that we don't have audio and video of police interactions going on on our streets. The fact that I have to believe a police officer is it's outrageous. But gentlemen, what would the inner city look out look like without the police force? I don't I mean, know. I don't have any damn street. cameras. All I'm well, asking you, you for it. is That's a camera. Why you don't look. You don't live in those areas, so you can get on the radio and play the good ship lollipop. But if you didn't have police in those areas, it, it, you couldn't walk down the street. Who said tonight? that there shouldn't be police? See, this is what the argument turns into. Oh, you don't okay. like the police? Hell, I don't know if I like the police. I don't have any <laughs> evidence. People that are paid to collect evidence refuse to have evidence put on them. Police unions are standing against cameras. What it looks like to me is a bunch of shiftless government bureaucrats that don't want to do a good job for me. Well, look, how well, long? Look, how, mistakes are made. You said you've been listening to the show for a while, Jack. How long? Yes, I have. Um, I, I usually work on cars on Saturday, and I have you guys on in my garage listening to you. I, I love you guys. I, I agree okay. with you guys on freedom. I mean, the, we are getting our liberties taken away from us. Well, then, then you must know thing. that we've never said get rid of the police. The right. frustration has been with the police destroying peaceful people's lives. And if the police, by the way, there was a protest. I don't know if you heard about this. There was a protest in New York City yesterday. This was yeah. a support the police protest, you know, because there's been all these anti uh, police account. There's been pro police accountability protests, anti police violence protests. And now we have finally the pro police protest. Guess who showed up? Nobody. It was empty. Well, not quite. Uh, there were the family members of the police. Those essentially were the people who showed up to support the police because the police are their own worst enemy. They could they could be in a position in this country where people respect them and appreciate them and bend over backwards to help them. But they have put themselves in a position where people are afraid of them, where people want to stay away from them, where people do not want to assist them, where they don't even want to talk to them because they're afraid they're going to get car charged with some nonsense crime that doesn't actually involve a victim. And there's good reason for them to be afraid of that because that's the the you know the light end of what the police might do to you. The war, you know the far end is they might rape you or possibly strangle you to death or shoot you or kill you in some other manner. And there's always the chance they're going to put you in a cold cage uh, for someone else to do those well, things to you. I I know, but so, I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to do that job for a while and have to deal with these people before you. These can say that. people. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the people, people you're talking people. about are everybody. You're talking about the your brothers and sisters and your friends and your family members and your coworkers. These are the people that are being picked on on a regular basis by the police. And all I've ever said here on Free Talk Live recently has been that the police need to do the right thing. They need to stop sure. aggressing against peaceful people. If all the cops were doing was going after murderers, rapists, arsonists, property destroying individuals, and other people who create real victims with there's a complaining party, then if that's all the police were doing, you wouldn't see protests in the streets about that because the police wouldn't be negatively affecting as many people as they do today. They hurt people people all the time go to any uh go to any courthouse a district court and sit in and watch an arraignment and you count get a little scratch sheet of paper in front of you and start checking off how many people are being arraigned for crimes with a victim and how many people are being arraigned for what are called mal prohibitum so-called crimes that have no victim i guarantee you it'll be at least 70 percent if not 80 or 90 percent of the people in that courtroom who are there for not harming anybody whatsoever so i've never said we don't need police i support the idea of protection but that is not what the police are doing that is not the service that they are offering and i thank you jack for the call tonight there's more coming up here 855 450 free 855-450-3733. You take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live's Live Saturday edition. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. 
LegalZoom.com. Jeff Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll free. Here at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. More of your calls coming up. Are you interested in the future of Bitcoin and the peer-to-peer economy? You can head to the second annual Bitcoin conference in Texas. It's at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March the 28th and 29th of next year. Speakers, exhibitions, a great opportunity to do some networking, as well as they're hosting the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. They did this last year and it was incredible. There were four businesses, uh, projects that were launched out of it. I think projects, probably a better term. Four projects that were launched out, each got $250,000. 
Um, Storage.io is one of them, and, and I think that's going to be really great. Mm. Another one is uh, they were going to do ride sharing through the blockchain. Just fascinating stuff. This is how technology, uh, you know, our lives are made better, and I'm really excited. If you're, um, the fact is, is that at the Texas Bitcoin Conference, they're going to highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone, as well as uh, heavily concentrate on where technology can go beyond just being a currency. If you want a glimpse into the future, you want to be in Austin, Texas, on March 28th and 29th. You head over to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get your tickets. If you use coupon code FTL, that's FTL is in free talk live, you get a $25 discount off the $150 admission price, which is, of course, very affordable for these kind of conferences. But not only that, the Texas Bitcoin Conference will also date, donate $25 to Sean's Outpost with every ticket purchased when you use that code. So you're getting an amazing price to a great event, and now you're also helping Sean's Outpost with their outreach and assistance to uh, people who are far less privileged. Free Talk Live was there last year. We had a great time, and we're excited to be part of it again in 2015. Head over to TexasBitcoinConference.com and get your tickets to be part of the future. It's TexasBitcoinConference.com. Whether you want to talk about Cuba or the police or whatever's on your mind, you just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE as we go back to the phones and the fun. Let's talk to Brian listening in Battle Creek to WBCK-FM. Hey, Brian. Brian, going once. Brian in Battle Creek. Hey. Yes, can you hear me? We have you now. Go ahead, Brian. Okay, all right. Uh, I guess I'm looking to get a clarification from you guys. I'm not quite sure what you guys are standing for as far sure. as you believe that there should be no government, uh, no – I know you guys said that there should be laws and should be police, but you would have to have – a government, you'd have to have borders, you know, limits on them. Uh, I don't think you guys are saying it should be every man for himself, but I, I'm not quite sure where you guys stand on that. I'm not quite sure where I stand on it either, but I can tell you this, um, that we do not here in the United States, we, um, you know, 236 years ago when, or whatever it was, the, the Constitution was uh, penned and ratified, was probably not the pinnacle of human governance that the world's ever going to see. Do you think that there's going to be something, some new technology in government in the future? Oh, I, I don't know, but I suspect I know just it seems like a fair bet, nature, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, who knows? But, right. So all I'm uh, saying is, is that monopolies, which is what um, you know, what the United States government, Washington D.C., essentially is. They they propose to rule the world. They use carrots and sticks to uh, control other governments around the world. All I'm saying is the competition is uh, so far competition has been the best, most humane, most moral way of. Um, you know, moving forward uh, to getting progress. And I think we should have competition. Now, when it comes to government, government's essentially an organization that proposes to protect you, right? Yes. Okay. Then why in the world do I need to have a monopoly protect me when we know that monopolies pr provide poor customer service and, um, you know, rarely allow it for innovation? Why can't we have uh, competition? Why can't I have protection services brought to me the same way I have fire insurance? Well, I mean, you 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 would have the United States government to protect you. You wouldn't be able to shop around and say, "Well, I want I the know. Cubans to protect us." I'm not really interested or, in the Cubans protecting me, but okay, I may choose the United right. States government. But see, governments are tied to land. Masses. But you can't shop around, Mark. Right, you're not that's, allowed. That's the problem. Governments are tied to land masses. About 300 years ago, the Puritans were executing the Quakers in the Massachusetts Bay Colony because they could not imagine the idea of religion not being tied to land masses. Today, you're living next door to somebody who's a completely different religion than you, likely, or at least a different denomination or whatever, and you're not trying to execute them. It's because religions here, at least here in the Western world, are generally not tied to land masses. I wonder what it would be like if governments weren't tied to land masses. They were just organizations that provided protection. And I'll never know that because there's an or there are several organizations that claim monopoly privilege over the land mass I live in, and they do not want competition. Well, I mean, people need to be able to band together for protection sure. and to better their standard of living. Yep. But just human nature is such that there's always going to be somebody who's wanting to take control over this area and wanting to impose their will on everybody who's in this area. 
and we're not going to be able to get away from that. Are you saying that mm -hmm. um, that you know because my insurance company uh, provides that I can choose between insurance companies that some insurance company is going to say that we have this area exclusively and will uh, kill or harm anybody any other insurance company that attempts to do business here? Because uh, no, I haven't seen that no. happen. No, I'm not. I'm not saying okay. that. I'm talking about uh, as far as as I've heard you guys talk before about how you you didn't. I know this isn't what you said, but it was something along the lines of you know that you didn't believe in government, you didn't want governments, uh, and I was trying to wrap my head I, around. I believe that in self-government. I just like to clarify. I believe in government. I just don't believe in a state, which is a mon uh, organization that claims a monopoly in government. Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to get clear. And Brian, yeah. thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate thanks. it. The toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty free. If I could just uh, just for a moment, uh, the fact is is that the state as we know it today has been handed down to us from the idea of autocrats, kings and princes ruled over areas, dukes and barons, and these folks. They ruled over areas, and really we have nothing different today. Counties are called counties because counts ruled them, okay? <laughs> the only difference between property taxes and quit rents is a couple of hundred years and who they're paid for paid to. Um, you know, these ideas are simply, you know, now you have the king is, you know, the majority of the voting public instead of the king. And that's not really any better of a system. We're moving from the master slave paradigm into a paradigm of more human freedom. I'm only proposing more human freedom. I am not saying that we don't need protection. I would like to try something new in the area of government, but I can't because People won't let me. Government, the government won't let me. Why won't they let me? Because monopolies hate competition. Let's talk to Will. He's in Indianapolis listening to WIBC. Hello, Will. Hi there. How are you? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I have a few questions for you guys. My okay. first one being, uh, do you guys have an affiliate outside of Indianapolis? Because the station I was listening to uh, cut out on me. Ooh, uh, I, oh, you mean you're driving. Just, you're just driving. outside of Indy. Uh, correct, no, correct. no, I don't think so. You're going to have to go to freetalklive.com and listen to the live stream. Yeah, you can go and grab our live stream over at freetalklive.com on the Listen Live okay. page. And there's and when you go there, you can get the archive of your call um, later. Yep, so that's one question. We'll let you do another one. Hang on. We're going to come back to you, though. we got to keep things short because we've got a lot of folks that want to comment here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We do have stations all over the United States, by the way, just not right outside of Indy besides WIBC. We're coming up. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll free here at 855-450-FREE. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We've got time for you with your thoughts, but if for whatever reason you're just too busy, you can't get home in time to pick up the phone, you don't want to call while you're driving or whatever, we do this seven nights a week. And you can join us, of course, for the live Sunday edition tomorrow. Uh, you're welcome to call in any night of the week, anytime you want, about anything that's on your mind. Hence the name Free Talk Live. With you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. And it's not too late. Although it's getting close to being too late to get Sherry's Berries on order for delivery before Christmas. You can get an amazing deal on these delicious, freshly dipped strawberries. They're dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness. Also decorated with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, and or nuts. Uh, you can go to berries.com to get the special offer, which is available to you as a Free Talk Live listener. It's starting at $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. But you're going to want to take my advice and double the berries for just $10 more. These are amazing quality strawberries. I've never had, we've had a number of Sherry's berries here, uh, and we've never had a bad <laughs> it's one. Always a pleasure. There's, there's, yeah, there's never been, a, we're always just excited, like giddy school children, <laughs> a Sherry's berries box shows up, and I'd like, when it, when it happened, I called you, didn't <laughs> I, Mark? It's like, it's here, Mark. I didn't even know it was coming, but it's here. And uh, they're really great. They're really great. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I've always been impressed by the quality of Sherry's berries, and so will the person for whom you're buying this as a gift, or just give it to yourself, because you're going to want to have some berries.com go there b-e-r-r-i-e-s.com click the microphone in the top right hand corner and type in ftl to get the special offer starting at just 19.99 for the berries but remember you double the berries for just ten dollars more again it's berries.com code is ftl and uh time's running out so don't miss out on this amazing opportunity it's a perfect gift without all the hassle of shopping for po folks and who could I mean, how can you go wrong with chocolate-covered strawberries? This is gourmet quality, great stuff. They're really great. Berries.com, codes FTL. Let's go back to Will. He's in Indianapolis, or he was. He's driving out of the area. And, Will, you're on Free Talk Live. You had another question for us. We'll uh, we'll give you a shot for one more. If you've got more questions, please call us another night. I want to make sure you get them all in, but we also want to get other folks on. Sure, totally understandable. Uh, and I guess it's, it's less of a question than more of just a discussion point. Uh, you know, with, with the North Korea, uh, you know, the hacking scandal and, and the movie being pulled, I, I think it's, it's particularly important to 
sort of, you know, have this idea that, you know, at this point, politics aren't aren't going to spur change within North Korea. You know, North Korea has, you know, one of the worst, you know, human rights records in the entire world. Um, you know, it's, you know, they have these 19th century, 20th century gulags that are still in existence with hundreds of thousands of people in them. Uh, but I think what's important to note now that North Korea is getting all this exposure again, um, you know, is that change needs to come from within the country. And I believe, you know, there, there are organizations out there trying to spur this change. Uh, you know, when the government can't feed its own people, the uh, you know, the people will will turn to illegal means to feed themselves. Uh, and they've done they that. Can. Yeah, they were pre- they're and pretty they good at not feeding them, uh, feeding their people. You know, yeah, yeah it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're great at not feeding their people. Yeah. But, you know, what we've seen is that, uh, you know, these, these people have begun to create these highly illegal black markets. Uh, and w- what they found, too, is that this foreign media is starting to come in through these black markets, which, you know, is, is or, 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 or uh, South Korean radio waves are starting to get into North Korea, and they're getting these, you know, um, you know, sort of these these jailbroken radios that are spurring all this change. They're My getting thumb drives, that, all kinds of stuff. Yep. Oh yeah, and 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 that's key because the change really isn't going to come from world leaders or political. It you know, can't. Uh, you know, political means exactly. It if can't. the United States hasn't from... figured out anything at this point, is is that you cannot export uh, democracy or freedom or a republic or whatever one wishes to use for a term. People have to. You know, this country, people rose up in a revolution, demanded their freedom, and the idea that uh, this country that supports kings and dictators around the world is going to export freedom and democracy to other countries, it just sounds ridiculous. Well, to me. what they can do is they can back the f off and leave uh, these other countries alone and then allow for more products to cross the border you know legitimately well people in south korea are sending balloons over with yeah. the movie with this movie apparently a, a pirated version of this movie the interview on it <laughs> and they're doing right. all kinds of stuff over will anything else right, you want to share right. real quick no no i just i think that's about it but i mean i i don't know if plugging nonprofits is 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 frowned upon here but there is a great mm-hmm. organization called liberty in north korea yes as who a actually has set up a uh has has set up a you know an underground railroad system where it, people can donate their money and and actually directly help the people of North Korea sort of spur change back at yeah, home. Yeah, they're themselves. a great they're a great group. We actually had them come to uh, where we are here in Keene, New Hampshire. They were on their uh, Jangmadang tour, which is uh, oh co- yeah, Korean. In fact, I'm doing that exact same thing next semester, so I'm really excited for it. And uh, I just meaning you're going to be out. on meaning you're going to be on their tour. You will, you'll be one of the I, people. I will be a nomad. Yes. Ah, very correct. cool, man. Well, uh, thanks, and give us a give us a call when you're out and about on that tour. It'd be interesting to hear your experiences. And will uh, don't forget to check us out online over at freetalklive.com. And North Korea is a tonight. big topic on this show. Yeah, that's fascinating okay, stuff. Great. Thanks, thanks for the call, great. dude. Well, this is my appreciate first time. it. I appreciate it. Very good. Liberty, yeah, that's libertyinnorthkorea.org. They uh, there was some just some very young folks. Maybe one of them I think was fresh out of high school. Uh, one fresh out of college. So you know, young folks came uh, through here. I don't know what Jamadang is, but it's Jamadang. That yeah, is uh, North word. Korean. Uh, there's Korean for black market. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, essentially, I mean, that's a rough, rough translation, I'm sure. But that's essentially what's been happening over there since people did starve in the 1990s due to the government being in charge of feeding folks. Uh, they have figured out, well, okay, we can't count on Kim Jong Il to put food in our mouths, so we're gonna have to figure this out ourselves. And they did. And, Some great leader. Yeah, and they created black markets, and essentially, they're not legal still to today. Uh, here we are 20 years later, essentially, but they're tolerated, right? Like, you know, the, the people in charge in North Korea know that the black market is what's keeping their uh, people from starving to death. And, and rising up in revolution. <laughs> so, you know, they kind of let them exist from what I understand. It's pretty uh, pretty fascinating stuff. And the the folks in Liberty from Liberty in North Korea are out and about touring around right now talking about this or giving presentations at high schools and colleges and churches and wherever it is they can get an audience. Uh, we had a, actually a presentation that was going to happen at Keene State College, but unfortunately there was a uh, conflict and we ended up having it at the Keene Activ- uh, Activist Center. And there was only maybe five or so people that came out because it was a last minute change of location. But man, it was really good. I mean, they were really great. They're spot on at their presentation that you could tell they practiced it a lot. You know, they weren't referring to notes or anything like that, not even really looking at the the PowerPoint presentation. Wonderful. Really well done. I was impressed. We'll continue here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, let's talk to Helen in Ithaca. You're on hey, Free Helen. Talk Live. Helen. Oh, hi there. Yeah. 
seems like some really bad news on the um, <clears throat> on the air uh, about a half hour ago that this gentleman who I did say gentleman that was kind of stupid, but um, he uh, like killed a girlfriend in Baltimore and then he just went to New York uh, City. I'm calling from upstate New York, and he just randomly like blew the brains out of two cops. Ooh, just. Yeah, I think I saw a headline about that. Yikes. I hadn't heard anything about it. Yeah. Was that what um, you wanted to share with us? Was just that that had happened or your thoughts on something uh, else? Yeah, because I think that it has to do with the cops, um, like, not handling the cases where there was an unarmed African-American person and they killed him. So maybe, I don't know what this guy's motivation was. I don't even know who the heck he is. But. They've killed a lot of unarmed people, uh, and you know, just certainly there's people who are upset about that. Obviously, violence isn't going to solve the problem of violence, and unfortunately yeah, but some... I think, you know, uh, you know, you've got to have um, law enforcement people, and they have a real risky job, and if I was married to one, every day I'd be saying a prayer that the guy came home, you know. Uh, if I was married to one, I'd be asking him why he's not arresting the bad cops. Personally. Well, I, 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 I mean, they were just sitting in a car, and this Looney Tune just came in and just blew. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying, out. Helen. It's not a good idea to use violence to solve problems. I don't support what the Looney Tunes I totally guy did. Agree with you. But I can understand if if that was his motivation was to you know get the cops back. Uh, I can understand the anger, and I think you like anything to lose. I appreciate your call tonight. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. I don't want to see the violence, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see if we see more of it over time as the police continue their aggression against peaceful people. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry. Offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility 
credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, and there is enough time for you if you dial in right now. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You can join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. If you enjoy this program and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please... Dig deep and find five bucks a month that you can send to us. Now, the way you can do it is easy. You can go and sign up for PayPal using any major credit card. Use Visa or MasterCard as well through amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp as in advertise, market, and promote, A-M-P, amp dot freetalklive.com that five bucks a month we invest into free talk live we use it to get on more radio stations we advertise our show to uh, the program directors of the the world to try to get free talk live on the air we've got over 150 stations we're close to 160 and we could have hundreds more it's possible we just need to have the marketing budget to get the show out there and you can help us with that you can also help us bring new internet listeners on board expand our satellite footprint around the world so people who don't have internet internet access can listen to us we're being listened to uh, right now in a good large swath of africa much of which has very little to uh, uh, no internet access and we can make that more possible with your five bucks a month. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. You will get perks. You'll get access to the Amp Only Facebook group, the Amp Only Call In Lines, the Amp Only Podcast, and more. Go and learn uh, all the details and get signed up over at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Back to the phones and the fun. Mac is in Seattle. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mac. How you doing, fellas? Hey, Mac, go ahead, Hello. sir. Just wanted to uh, tell you about my memories of Cuba. I was in the uh, U.S. government's socialist military for a total of 10 years. I was in the Navy for four, and I was in the Coast Guard for five, and then I did some reserve time. Um, so uh, the when I was in the Navy, I never had to hold anybody at gunpoint. But when I was in the Coast Guard, I did, and it was in Cuba. Uh, we picked up some uh, refugees that were floating around in little uh, rinky-dink boats. Basically, they were like bathtubs. We rescued them. We had to keep them outside the skin of the ship, that is to say, on the deck, because if they came inside the skin of the ship, that was considered American soil, and then we'd have to let them come to to, to America, which the uh, government would not let us do that. Now, it's and, interesting. Uh, we, this is really interesting part of for, U.S. foreign policy. Because you and uh, Cubans are considered political refugees, if they do mm-hmm. touch American soil, they can cl- claim refugee status, but right. they employ the Coast Guard to essentially prevent them from doing that. So you know, right. if you don't want them to be political refugees, declare them as uh, pariahs, persona non grata, mm-hmm. the the poorest of people in the Western hemi- among the poorest of people in Western Hemisphere are terrorists, and they cannot come to America. They'll bring their socialist ideas or whatever it is that you say. Just keep them out. Why do they play this double game? Right, exactly. Well, there was about 20 of them 
who acted like, well, it's no big deal. We'll just try again. But there was one guy who claimed that he was uh, a, uh, a political dissident. He was an older man. He was probably an adult or close to it when the revolution happened. He was that old. He had scars on his back that were uh, sort of obscuring his great big tattoo that he had of Jesus Christ on a cross. And he claimed that he was being persecuted for his uh, economic, political, and religious views in Cuba. And uh, so because of that, we couldn't just turn around and bring him right back as we normally did. We had to hold him there. We had to bob around out in the water, wasting fuel and, fu- and food, <laughs> while the State Department contacted the, the, uh, the Cuban government to find out what we're going to do with this guy. It was finally established that we were going to drop him off at, an, at a Cuban uh, Navy base, the, the oh. Cuban Navy, not Guantanamo, but the I'm Cuban sure Navy. I'm sure the Cuban Navy will treat him well. Oh, right, exactly. Yeah, he was. I'm sure he went there and got his, his butt beat is yeah. what happened. But mm-hmm. anyway— the, the 20 that weren't claiming uh, that they wanted refugee status, they just went merrily along, uh, on their way, as far as I know. I mean, as far as anybody knows. But this guy, he stood there while our captain, who spoke fluent Spanish, um, talked with some muckety-muck from the Cuban government. And I was ordered, they, they handed me an M16 and told me to hold this man at gunpoint, stay out of the camera range because they had their uh, news, the, the state news cameras were there. Wonderful. They were all re- ready and willing to film a guy being held at gunpoint that, by the U.S. You know, that would make great propaganda. Well, these cameras were really old, and uh, it took a while to set them up. So but just about the time they got set up, we would move off camera, us guys with the guns. And I was ordered to shoot him if he tried to, if he tried to make a run for it and get inside the skin of the ship. I was ordered to shoot him. So oh, wow. yeah, that's not, not, not something I'm very proud of. Mm. as you can tell. So uh, anyway, that's my memory of Cuba. So just wanted to kind of throw that out there for your consideration. Yeah, man. Thanks for sharing that tonight, Mac. I can only imagine, uh, you know, how much, how much different that guy's life would have been if he could have gone in there inside the skin of that ship. It's terrible. Appreciate the call. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So, uh, yeah, the the Cuba situation, I hope that we'll see some development on this, although I'm not going to get my hopes up for it really too much because, well, it would require an act of Congress to actually lift the embargo to make it so that you could travel to Cuba um, and or do more business with the folks over in Cuba. And that's going to require an act of Congress, which is probably not going to happen within the next month. And then, of course, the Republicans are going to be taking over uh, out there fairly soon. And how likely it will be under Republican control, I don't know. It will be interesting to see if a discussion gets started at the very least uh, you know, on a national level about this. I, I would like to see that happen. Yeah, I just think it's silly that there's this, uh, you know, <laughs> it sounds like a, a political football really is what it is, right? Like, Of um, course it is. You know, you know, that's what it's gotten turned into, and there's no point in that. The Republican governor of Florida, uh, Jeb Bush, at one point, he had a Cuban wife. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's Cuban senators. What is the point in this whole argument? Um, you know, I mean, we're just talking. You're not going to make Raul or Castro's life worse by, or Fidel's, I should say, uh, Castro's, uh, Fidel Castro's life worse by embargoing Cuba. Th- we've tried this for 50 years. When you try something for 50 years and it fails, that's the very definition of insanity. Continuing to do the same thing and expecting different results. So I had told you, Mark, that I was going to summarize the other point because we had asked, we talked about the Cuba thing for a solid hour and a half last night, and we didn't get a single person, unlike tonight, we did get them tonight. Uh, but last night we didn't get a single person to call in and explain why uh, Cuba, you know, l- lowering the restrictions on Cuba was a, a a bad idea. But we did get some Facebook comments, and one of the comments was so there was the kind of the viewpoint of oh everything Obama does is bad, he couldn't possibly do anything right, and Cuba bad terrorism, etc. Yeah. And then there was the other the Which other really viewpoint. moves the ball forward. The the other viewpoint was that well now Cuba's ruined now they're all the corporations are going to go in and destroy the culture there. That was the other objection. Right. The, the culture of <clears throat> poverty. Of poverty. <laughs> right. Yeah. Of starving and eking out an existence and not having a job and yeah. living on welfare. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, just wander through some poverty-stricken area of the world with your Starbucks and tell them how corporations are ruining the world. <laughs> punch it up, punch it up on your iPhone and show them how uh, how yeah. corporations are ruining the world. Then go back to your you know place and eat all the food that was brought to you by corporations. Look, I'm not a fan of corporations. A, a corporation is a is is a government piece of paper that allows people to dodge their responsibilities in doing business. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people that are against corporations are against business. And business is really essentially the only alternative to violence. Business is doing is is trading between right. people. Nobody I mean nobody in their right mind is in any way legitimately afraid of the red Chinese. Because Chinese folks are not going to be attacking their biggest customer. There's so much business that goes on between the United States, you know, businesses here and businesses in China, many of which are to some extent state operated, as I understand it. But there's so much business that uh, that goes on, it would be suicide. It would be economic, financial suicide for them to do anything like invade or somehow use violence uh, against the United States. But yet, you know, the there are still some people who believe that. They're, they live in fear. The red Chinese are just waiting out there for the right moment to attack. And sorry, there's just no reason why that would make any sense whatsoever. Then why would China want to attack a country that it practically owns? Well, that's another good point. Yeah. So, uh, Ron Paul, we never got to finish his piece on shutting down the government. He says, get rid of the Federal Reserve. He goes on to say, get rid of the IRS. Uh, The foreign policy, the militaristic foreign policy should be high on the shutdown list. Bring the troops home, he says. And, of course, end the insane spying programs and end these crazy government uh, police programs like the TSA, the NSA, the CIA. Ron Paul's calling for all of this as his Christmas gift. Unfortunately, uh, Santa Claus cannot fulfill those particular wishes as much as we might like to see them fulfilled. There you go. I, um, I, I wish Ron Paul would get some of the things he's asked for here, all of the things he's asked for, but I don't see the uh, IRS going anywhere. He also calls for an end to all forms of welfare. I'll link to this full piece from Ron Paul on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can access those easily by going to news.freetalklive.com. And Mark will not be back until 2015. We'll continue live shows every single night with our wonderful co-hosts, starting with tomorrow's live Sunday show. We'll see you then online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye. <laughs> You Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. Ginger in Florida, you're on Free Talk Live. I just thought I'd call and give you all some news. We found Ginger. out on a... Wait, I thought your name was Paula. Huh? Are, you tra- are you trying to hide your identity, Paula? Are you trying to protect yourself from the NSA and the New World Order? I thought your name was Paula. <laughs> no, anyway... Your I name's just Ginger? Me. Yeah. Why has it been Paula every other time you've called? I guess she does call, too. But anyway, Do I just sister? want to give you some information. Uh, we yeah, just heard on another Ginger. program <laughs> that, well, actually, the whole world is going to a world collapse. They said <laughs> we, have, we have till the 1st of June. So what but I want to know, uh, Ginger, is do you know who Paula is? What are you, I'm trying to give you some information. You've given me the information. You said the world's going to collapse in less than a week. What I'm going to start drinking me? now, and I'm not coming out of it until after uh, July's over. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges yeah! on This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, December 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $330. Antiwar.com reports Pakistan had scrapped the death penalty for civilians in 2008, but with officials eager to show they are tough on terror, they brought back the policy yesterday, hanging a pair of militants. They're the first of many, according to Pakistani officials, with another 400 executions in the weeks to come, with the Home Ministry saying the killings will boost morale in the public after this week's massacre. Pakistan has been trying to increase Taliban body counts since the massacre, claiming 119 militants killed in various offenses since then, though as usual, the claims that everyone killed was a militant seems debatable. Details on who is being executed and when are scant, but the Interior Ministry says that some 20 other detainees will be executed over the weekend and into early next week. Pakistani Taliban officials issued a statement vowing revenge for the executions, saying they will likely kill the families of army generals and politicians as a way of causing mourning for them as well. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports President Barack Obama vowed on Friday to respond to a devastating cyber attack on Sony Pictures that he blamed on North Korea and scolded the Hollywood studio for caving in to what he described as a foreign dictator imposing censorship in America. Obama said the cyber attack caused a lot of damage to Sony, but that the company could not have let itself be intimidated into halting the public release of the movie The Interview, a lampoon portraying the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Obama told a news conference, we will respond, we'll respond proportionately, and we'll respond in a place and time and manner that we choose. Earlier, the Federal Bureau of Investigation announced that it had determined that North Korea was behind the hacking of Sony, saying Pyongyang's actions fell outside the bounds of acceptable state behavior. Obama said North Korea appeared to have acted alone. Washington began consultations with Japan, China, South Korea, and Russia seeking their assistance in reigning in North Korea. It was the first time the United States has directly accused another country of a cyber attack of such magnitude on American soil and set up a possible new confrontation between longtime foes Washington and Pyongyang. The destructive nature of the attack and threats from the hackers that led the Hollywood studio to pull the movie set it apart from previous cyber intrusions. A North Korean diplomat at the United Nations in New York said Pyongyang had nothing to do with the attack. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports astronauts on the International Space Station have a new socket wrench, but it did not come via cargo ship. It was emailed from Earth, beamed up into space, and then printed by the crew of the International Space Station using their new 3D printer. In late September, the first zero-gravity 3D printer was delivered to the International Space Station by a SpaceX resupply mission. In November, astronauts finally got around to assembling the machine, designed and manufactured by California-based company Made in Space. Astronauts successfully tested the printer in late November, and now the new technology is being used with a purpose. NASA predicted that the space station might become a machine shop with the rival of its new printer, and sure enough, the first printed product of note is a 
ratcheting socket wrench. It's the first time hardware has ever been emailed into space. What began as a simple CAD file on computers on Earth created by engineers and computer scientists at Made in Space is now a usable plastic wrench aboard the International Space Station. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. Starbucks begins its sinister phase two of operation. This is Doyle Redland reporting. After a decade of aggressive expansion throughout North America and abroad, Starbucks suddenly and unexpectedly closed its 56,423 worldwide locations today to prepare for what insiders call phase two of the company's long-range plan. Cynthia Valcamp, Starbucks head of marketing, made this brief statement at a press conference earlier today. We have enjoyed furnishing you with coffee-related beverages and are excited about the important role you play in our future plans. Existing Starbucks franchises across the nation have been shuttered with high-strength titanium, and the well-known Starbucks logo has been slightly altered to present the familiar mermaid figure as a cyclopean mermaid whose all-seeing eye forms the apex of a world-spanning pyramid. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. It's time for Off the Air Live. 